Want to watch football without the restrictions of blackouts or cable? Check out expressvpn.com to help you get access to all the live games. Sign up today using the link in the description to get three free months. Go to both fam. It's the director Chargers fans. Man, 22 days away from the NFL draft. I got a good one for you guys today. We got a mock draft for the ages. The lock, cock, and ready to rock, as Coach Harbaugh would say, reload in the 2024 NFL draft. One thing I pointed out in my Twitter this morning that I think is really important, okay? I think this draft is going to be special in terms of the quarterback position. We already know that there's a big chance of four quarterbacks going in the top five picks, which could land the Chargers an awesome player like Marvin Harrison Jr. However, I don't know if it's being talked about quite as much. Um, If six quarterbacks go in the first round, which I think is very possible, the same application could be given to other rounds like round two for the Chargers at pick 37, which could see some superior talent slide down to us at that point as well. And at that point, the Chargers position at pick number five, the top of every single round, becomes that much more powerful. So today's mock draft is going to revolve around a couple of things. One, we're going to lock... Uh, uh, and and get ready to rock with this reload for Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman and Jesse Minter to get this, I would say, unit, this brand new team ready for the Harbaugh vision of 2024 and beyond, as well as take a look at how much value we can squeeze out of this draft because we all know that Joe Hortiz is going to be looking for it around every single corner. Now, before we do kick off, shout out to the sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use code DIRECTOR to match your first deposit up to $100. Get in on the action. Newcomers, take a look at this uh, special uh, uh, on screen here. Definitely take advantage of that. Before we do kick off, hit us up with a like and sub if you do enjoy this Chargers content. The small amount of time you guys take to hit the like, sub, and bell notification helps me out a lot. Let's get into it, baby. Lights, camera, action. I know, I know. We got to redo the opener. Some things to update there. As soon as we get some new promo footage uh, from the Chargers, we're definitely going to be taking a look into that. Here is your five-round mock draft for the Los Angeles Chargers. You'll notice every week we try to add another round, get a little bit more research and some later-round prospects. Well, today, I think we're about ready to start unloading some of my research in round five with three mock drafts. You guys know how we like to do it on this channel. Drafts A, B, and C. You guys in the comment section below, feel free to rank them or tell me which one of them were your favorite. You can also give me some criticism on some changes you would make in those drafts. Let's go ahead and kick it off with draft A. Not going to give too much away as far as what the theme is here, but we're going to start off with a scenario that's becoming more increasingly popular among mock drafters out there. Chargers fans excited about this, you know, idea of, you know, quarterback going one, two, three, and four, potentially with a trade down from the Arizona Cardinals, leaving the Chargers with the prime prize of the draft in Marvin Harrison Jr. I'll tell you what, guys. A couple of months ago, I thought there was absolutely no way this was going to happen. As soon as the Cardinals missed that field goal, etching the Chargers, you know, position at number five, I thought our shot at Marvin Harrison was down the pooper. But at this point, it feels like with all the hype revolving around quarterback and all the desperate quarterback needy teams that should be willing to trade up into a top four position, it feels like Marvin Harrison Jr. becomes more and more real every day. And of course, in the talent of Marvin Harrison, you guys know the drill. This dude is probably the most amazing wide receiver I've ever seen come through the NFL draft. He's going to be a bona fide star in the league. A lot of people compare him to the great Larry Fitzgerald, which I have to say does hold up when you watch his highlights tapes and read up and just how tremendously talented and unique this guy is going to be in the pros so get excited chargers fans if marvin harrison jr is available at five it's kind of one of those situations where i kind of pick and don't look back don't question it you're you're blessed to see the very best player in the draft fall into your lap at pick number five 
Now we're going to shake things up a little bit right away with a trade. And this is something that I do believe Joe Hortiz is going to attempt at least a couple of times in this draft. Maybe only becoming successful with one of them, maybe none of them. But I do think there is a shot that the Chargers move down in the second round. There is a shot of them moving completely out of the second round. I think the talent is going to be very nice in and around pick number 37. Like I mentioned with all the quarterbacks pushing talent down the board as six of them I do believe are going to be selected in the first round round this doesn't always mean maybe we're going to stick and pick and grab the guy that we want at 37 via talent and it could also mean that there's going to be a lot of first round talent left on the board that other teams would be willing to trade up for and in this instance the Houston Texans who are building something special in Houston after adding Stefan Diggs this morning they see a player that they love at 37 they have a little bit of extra ammunition they're going to go ahead and trade up with the Chargers giving the Bolts an extra fourth round Pick. Yes, the Chargers do move down, but by only, what, five spots while adding an extra pick in this particular draft? I think that would be well worth it. So in this scenario, round number two at pick number, what it would be, 42 via the Houston Texans. I got the Chargers getting a good value on Zach Frazier, center out of West Virginia. We've talked about this guy a couple of different times. There's a few centers in this draft that get me very, very excited. And I do uh, consider Zach Frazier to be the cream of the crop, the top of the top, the pro's pro, as Coach Harbaugh would put it, because of a couple of different factors. One, yes, he's a dog, middle of that line, but he's also a leader. Yes, we've said, we've said this a lot about the center prospects this year. You want a guy that can take charge of that line, assign blocking you know, assignments, and, and take some of the load off Justin Herbert's shoulders when uh, getting ready to uh, uh, snap the ball. So I love Zach Frazier. I think he would be an excellent talent for the Chargers. And quite honestly, one of the reasons that I like the trade down scenario in round two. Sure, you can convince me of it in round one. I think there's some great value to be had there, especially if you get away with two first round picks from the Minnesota Vikings. But I think I feel a little bit more comfortable trading down in the second round where you can still get a dog and also maybe find an extra pick or two along the way. Let's go ahead and move on to round number three. The Chargers get a value pick here. Again, alluding to our draft position early in every single round. The Chargers at pick 69 are going to select Kyrie Jackson, cornerback out of Oregon. Now, the Chargers, I do believe, need to go corner in the first couple of days. And I think here in round three, this is actually a great value to find a guy with such high potential. Kyrie Jackson has maybe some of the higher ceilings that you're going to see out of the cornerback prospects in 2024. And that's because this dude i think he's around six foot three with crazy speed uh you know, has a lot of upside in a lot of different areas yes he does need work but he's also the probably my favorite part about him a very very physical cornerback in this draft one that has has a lot of upside and run defense uh, maybe play him a little bit in the slot as an unconventional giant slot corner um, I don't know. I like this guy quite a bit. I view him as a late second round pick. In this instance, he slides to us in the third round. And I feel pretty good about a guy that can hold his own on the outside with those measurables uh, while giving the Chargers a little bit of time to develop him and maybe find another guy via free agency to help them out. Um, but in this instance, I, I kind of have a fun strategy here that I don't know if I've shown too many times in my mock drafts. And that's going to be with our follow-up selection here. Um, in round number four, the Chargers' first of three, third, or should say first of three fourth round picks at pick 105, I'm going to go back to back corner here and select Jerrion Jones, cornerback out of FSU. Now, this dude, if you're looking for a slot corner and you're looking for one that is especially successful in man coverage, this is your guy. Maybe not as physical as the other slot corners that I've seen in this draft, but boy howdy, is he very consistent in terms of his tackling. He's going to get his players down. He's super smart in coverage. Maybe a little bit limited in his athleticism, but my goodness, is this dude very, very, very smart uh, and a guy that can definitely hold down the slot corner position. So in the Chargers selecting an offensive lineman in the second round, where a lot of the times we see a, a cornerback, I have the Chargers taking their center in round two and their corner in round three. Let's go ahead and help out that position a little bit more with another top-tier corner in Jerry and Jerry Jones in the fourth round that kind of help round 
round out the Chargers starting cornerbacks in 2024. Sure, you're probably going to see a guy like Jasir Taylor maybe in the slot for a while, but I think, you know, Asante Samuel, Kyrie Jackson, Jerry and Jones will be an awesome cornerback room that kind of flips that whole position on its head from where it was very weak to maybe one of the stronger units on the Chargers. Let's go ahead and move into our second fourth round pick in this draft. This one's via Chicago at pick 110. We're going to take Leonard Taylor the third defensive lineman out of Miami. This dude maybe lacks a little bit of consistency, but he does carry traits that you love to see on the defensive line if you are Jesse Minter. The dude is explosive. The dude is powerful. The dude is versatile. This is the kind of talent that you want on a new system that's going to need guys that move around a little bit, but that do bring the juice when it comes to coming after the quarterback from the interior and defending the run in those situations. I would view him more as a guy you can rotate in for right now, but does have a lot of upside if developed properly by Jesse Minter and company, which, let's be honest, has a good shot of happening in that situation system so the Chargers get their defensive lineman in round four and guess what round four is not over yet in round four pick 123 via the Houston Texans the Chargers will select Will Shipley running back out of Clemson I think this is a pretty good value on Shipley if you ask me this is a dude that when you're talking about the Chargers running back room adds uh, versatility, I guess. He brings a different flavor to the running back position than what we already have on the roster. Right now with Gus Edwards, we've got the big power guy, and uh, I, I, Isaiah Spiller, who can be that nice one-cut dude. Shipley brings the shiftiness. He brings the speed, certainly. I think he ran a pretty nice 40. Um, and he's going to bring that complimentary you know, aspect to the Chargers offense when it comes to receiver as well. He's a great receiver, has awesome, fast, uh, uh, and great footwork. He's a good complement to what the Chargers have in the roster and maybe a really good guy to develop as running back two for the future. Sure, there's a couple of guys in this draft that I would consider being the Chargers running back one of the future, but there are certainly a lot more guys I view as a solid, solid running back two of the future, and Will Shipley is certainly a great value to me in the fourth round. Now, adding that extra round to this mock draft, it, to wrap up mock draft A, we're going to go ahead in the fifth round and select Ben Sinnott at pick number 140. This is our tight end out of Kansas State. This is certainly something that I think the Chargers are going to look at. A lot of people think that we're not going tight end at all because we got Disley, because we got Hayden Hurst, because we already got Donald Parham. It's fair to think that, and I think it's fair to think that that could happen. But I do believe that the Chargers have an opportunity to select a couple of different guys in the middle of the late rounds that bring – the, the style of play that they're going to be looking for in the future. Because let's remember, Hayden Hurst only under contract for one season. I think Will Disley's under contract for a couple of seasons. They're going to need a long-term answer. And I think a guy like Ben Sinnott in the later rounds is a great solution to a problem the Chargers are going to have as soon as next year. And a dude that can probably chip in and uh, uh, benefit from this offense and, and contribute to this offense very, very early in his career. Sure, bring in a Hayden Hurst to hold down the fort for one year, but I think Ben Sinnott is an awesome receiver. I think an even better, like, utility guy that can play as a blocker, that can play in line, that can play, you know, outside, inside, doesn't matter. He feels like the perfect sort of archetype of tight end that uh, Jim Harbaugh could create a star out of. So Ben Sinnott's going to round up draft A as a quick uh, actually, we'll save that for the end. We'll do a quick uh, wrap-up of all the drafts at the end there. That's going to wrap up Draft A. If you guys like that the most, hit it up in the comment section, or you guys can start ranking these if you like. I see a lot of that in the comment section lately as well. Let's go ahead and kick off Draft B, which I'll be honest, is, is pretty exciting to think about, all right? It's one that I think a lot of Chargers fans can get behind when it comes to the idea of trading, okay? And there's going to be a couple of versions of how trading is going to work in this particular draft. Let's go ahead and kick off Draft B with a trade, and one, again, that is kind of predictable. A lot of Chargers fans think this could happen if the Arizona Cardinals stick and pick and we do see a quarterback talent like J.J. McCarthy or even Jaden Daniels slash Drake May available at pick number five. There's going to be a team willing to trade the farm to the Chargers to acquire their quarterback of the future. And it's because the Giants would be picking next after the Chargers, who would very likely be taking a quarterback at that position. So if there was going to be a trade, it feels like the Chargers would be a very good target if a guy like that is still available. And in this instance, 
we do go ahead and pick up the Vikings um, two first round picks at number 11 and 23 as well as the quarterback tax some people think the tw- the the third round pick of next season will be enough some people believe it could be as much as their next year's first round pick which let's be honest would be very very exciting i think i would definitely take that trade 10 out of 10 times all right so in this trade down scenario and this is where things get kind of fun the chargers end up with a generational talent anyway and it's something that i think is very likely to happen if the chargers are in this range the chargers in round one Uh, pick 11 via Minnesota are going to select Brock Bowers, tight end out of Georgia. And this is where the whole mentality of the Chargers offense shifts. This is where you take Brock Bowers and instead of saying, hey, you're our traditional tight end, no, you are our number one weapon on this team through the air. Brock Bowers is a very special prospect in which you can line him up inside at slot. You can line him up outside at wide receiver, which in this offense and in this particular instance, I think I could see happening a lot if he's the top uh, guy on this roster. But this really brings that First generation of oomph at this position for Justin Herbert and one of the best targets or one of the best weapons you can look to target uh, uh, in the entirety of the NFL. His yak ability is the impossible you know, task of bringing him down, his route running, his blocking. Everything feels damn near perfect when talking about Brock Bowers and in a uh, Jim Harbaugh system in a Greg Roman offense in in this situation I think Brock Bowers would absolutely thrive in this opportunity with the Bolts so Brock Bowers brings the Chargers an especially exciting offensive weapon even in a trade down scenario where we miss out on one of the big three at wide receivers we still get a number one weapon in the NFL in Brock Bowers At this point, the Chargers do have two first-round picks, so let's go ahead and take a look at the second one. At pick number 23, the Chargers via Minnesota are going to select Nate Wiggins, cornerback out of Clemson. I do love this solution in the first round. The Chargers get an elite weapon at tight end with Brock Bowers at their first first first-round pick, their second first-round pick results, and one of the best cornerbacks in this class. And some would even say maybe a value, a huge value at pick number 23, starting to slide a little bit because of a minor injury at the combine. This dude will be ready to rock and roll by training camp, and he brings the important aspects of the position to the Chargers. Super. Superb coverage ability in both man and zone. Very scheme, you know, uh, versatile, you scheme proof. You don't have to worry about him fitting in in any particular system. He's going to bring the heat, um, as well as size and speed. The dude is six foot two. I think ran the fastest forty time at the uh, combine for the position. I think it was like a four two nine. The dude would be an awesome value at this pick and represents what should be a very strong group of cornerbacks still available in and around pick number 23. The Jeans should still be there. Uh, Wiggins could still be there. Kule McKinstry could still be there. I think the Chargers would be very happy with the available cornerbacks in round number one. Now I'm about to throw a curveball at you guys. Get ready. right? Put on your big boy pants. Uh, uh, brace yourselves. Hold on to your butts. It's going to get crazy here, man. I got the Chargers. Throwing another trade at the table here in round number one. Here's your next trade, guys. This is big. This is about, this is the lock, cock, and ready to rock, rock and roll kind of trade I got going on for Joe Hortiz, which let's be honest, the Ravens have not been shy about trading up the past decade. The Chargers could start uh, adopting that mentality as soon as this year with some of the extra ammunition that they've acquired over the last couple of weeks. I got the Chargers trading back into the late first round with the San Francisco 49ers, giving up our second round pick. And yes, the extra fourth round pick that we traded away uh, Keenan Allen for in the fourth round in order for the Bolts to jump the Kansas City Chiefs at pick number 31 or 32 to pretty much guarantee that they don't land this particular player. We're going to jump the Chiefs and select in round one, pick 30 via San Francisco, Lad McConkey. This dude is going to be special in the NFL. And for whatever reason, I see him not as high in like the mid second round or the mid first round where I, I'm guessing he should be selected. I see him a lot of the times in the late first, early second. I think this dude is going to be stupid special in the NFL. In terms of hands, in terms of separation, in terms of uh, 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 
insane route running. This dude carries it all. The only thing he does not possess is the big size at receiver that you would like to see at a prototypical X receiver position. Like this, this dude really carries everything that you're looking for, including nice speed as well. So I, I all of a sudden, the Los Angeles uh, slash Michigan slash Baltimore uh, Chargers are going to throw Georgia into the mix with their two top weapons and Lad McConkey and Brock Bowers heading to L.A. with Jim Harbaugh. These two weapons would be so fantastic to see play together. Um, you got your new wide receiver one in McConkey. You got your new uh, uh, tight end one and maybe even receiver one on this team in Brock Bowers. That would be a very exciting offense all of a sudden that does carry a lot of you know, run balance upside as well. Because when you're talking about Lad McConkey in this offense, it's going to feature a lot more power run, a lot more run in general. Think about what play action is going to look like with this guy. Think about what RPOs are going to look like with this guy, the kind of separation he gets. I would be very excited to see those two weapons together on the bolts. All right. So the Chargers did trade away some draft capital here, but it really was to move up a few spots to secure their wide receiver one. And giving us three first round picks is kind of an exciting thing to think about. All right. Now let's go ahead and move into round three as the Chargers have traded away their second round pick in order to get Lad McConkey. We're going to go ahead in the third round and select Chris Jenkins, defensive lineman, Michigan. I, we, I, we have to assume we're going to get at least one Michigan guy in this draft. And I would certainly be excited if it ended up being Chris Jenkins. The freaky strong defensive lineman who is the, the run-stopping king of this draft class. The dude is absolutely insane. And I think in particular, you know, Jesse Minter having the, the familiarity he does with this dude is going to have a good time creating a nice physical offense up front to set the precedence and set the tone for everything happening behind him. So Chris Jenkins, certainly a nice selection there and already feeling very good about this strong class here or the strong draft here in draft B. Let's go ahead and move here into round four. The Chargers having one selection now after trading away their second fourth round pick. With their fourth round pick at pick 105, they're going to select Cedric Van Pran, another Georgia Bulldog coming to the Chargers center. And honestly, one of the best prospects in terms of fit for the Chargers in the late rounds at the center position. This dude is huge, right? He's going to bring that big power that the Chargers are looking for from the position. He's going to be bringing that strength, that uh, anchor that everybody's wanting to find, you know, the space for the guy up the middle that Gus Edwards need to bring, needs to, to carry it, you know, for three, four, five yards of carry. This is the kind of dude you want to run behind, right? And again, the familiarity, which is something that kind of gets me giddy between him and Brock Bowers and uh, McConkey, it's it's kind of fun to think of the best pieces of this last year's awesome Georgia offense on the Los Angeles Chargers with Justin Herbert. So I think Cedric Van Pran will be an awesome option. He doesn't have to step in right away. We have Bradley Bozeman there for right now, but I do think eventually, and maybe even by the, the start of the season, he could win starting duties, uh, putting Bozeman in backup duty. But that's, that's an awesome selection there in the fourth round. To wrap up ra uh, draft B, I got the Chargers in the fifth round selecting Taj Washington, wide receiver out of USC. There's a couple of Washingtons I like in this and a couple of Maliks I like in this, right? Uh, Malik Washington is a fun guy that we've talked a lot about in previous drafts. Uh, his uh, uh, name counterpart in Taj Washington is also a very promising, promising uh, prospect to think about in this system in particular. This dude has crazy good hands, especially for his size, which is kind of rare to see. This is an excellent slot option if you're still looking for talent at that position, if you're looking for options at that position. But if anything else, the Chargers really need to focus in on some depth in this draft. Whether it be early or late, we need wide receivers, and I think at least two of them. And I think Taj Washington offers A++++ depth when you're talking wide receiver three, four, or five. This dude could develop into something special, but if anything, we got some awesome depth with this dude on the roster. So there you go, guys. That's draft B. Kind of exciting. Two first round picks. I think that's the first time I've done that in uh, my slate of uh, mock drafts this season. All right. To wrap up this uh, mock draft episode, let's go ahead and move into mock draft C. We'll go ahead and re uh, um, 
to review all the mock drafts at the end of the video here. Let's move into mock draft C, where in the first round, I got the Chargers sticking and picking and selecting the best available receiver on the board, which would have the entirety of the Bolt fam screaming with joy. It's Malik Neighbors headed to Los Angeles, who was just in L.A. yesterday visiting with the Chargers and Justin Herbert during their first uh, practice or say get together of the offseason. Very, very exciting thought of Malik Neighbors to the Chargers. And this, dudes, I quite honestly, like, yes, Marvin Harrison Jr., when you're talking about a firm and secure future of the position, building back up the wide receiver room that's been depleted without Keenan and Mike all of a sudden, Marvin Harrison, to me, I think is still that best building block. But if you're talking about upside, you're talking about ceiling, if you're talking about the potential of the next Tyreek Hill level madness at the position of wide receiver, Malik Neighbors is that dude. And when you pair him with the kind of arm that Justin Herbert's been begging to use the last couple of seasons, crazy things could happen. And Malik Neighbors to the Chargers is a very, very strong way to start this draft. Some people still on the trade down wagon. I think if Neighbors, Harrison, or even Adunze are there, you take one of those receivers and you never look back. In this case, Malik Neighbors to the Chargers. The Bolts all of a sudden, this electrified, dangerous passing team behind Herbert and Neighbors, along with a strong running attack, are going to be one of the more complete and dangerous offenses you'll find in the NFL. That's as big of a presence that Neighbors would bring to this team. Now, in round two, I can't help myself at this point. I need a trade down. If I, if it were me in charge, I'm trading down in the second round. I'm going to do it again in this mock draft. C, this time with the Cleveland Browns, who want to move up significant position to select a guy that slipped into the second round. And in this instance, the Chargers are going to return a third round pick in this trade down scenario, which is very significant. That means the Bolts will go into the third round with two picks, as well as in the fourth round with two picks. So buckle up. We got a lot of guys to draft here in drop mock draft C. So in this instance, the Chargers moving down with the Cleveland Browns at pick number 54 are going to select. This is where I'm dropping the bomb on you guys. Okay. Keon Coleman, wide receiver FSU. I'm going to get a lot of hate for this pick, and I'm prepared for it because I get it. I agree with a lot of the reservations that people have around Keon Coleman after the combine. A lot of people gave up on this dude after he ran a pretty lackluster, I think it was 4-6-1. I think he got it down into the 4-5s at his pro day. I don't remember, but it's not the best speed, and I agree with you guys. And it's something that I want to move away from as a Chargers fan. The slow guys, the guys, you know, that don't bring the juice. It's something that I want to put in the past and leave behind and bring in the speed. I want to see the electricity enter the Chargers with, with Justin Herbert. However, I'm having a really hard time putting behind me the talent of Keon Coleman and the potential of what he could be with this team. And in particular, the biggest shocker of this all may be that I went wide receiver back to back. And it's because I believe the Chargers understand they have an obligation to reload at wide receiver after letting go of two of the best Chargers wide receivers we've had in a long time. Mike and Keenan are going to leave behind very big shoes to fill. And if the Chargers decide to get some value in the second round, as well as pick up the other wide receiver to fill that those shoes of Mike and, and Keenan, I don't know if I disagree with that. And Keon Coleman kind of feels like the perfect yin-yang guy to Malik Neighbors. A lot of people wondering if the Chargers are a good fit for Malik Neighbors because we don't have Keenan anymore, because we don't have Mike anymore. Our X guy is kind of at this point going to be Quinton Johnson because he has the size, but he should probably be in the slot a little bit more than not at this point in his career. Give me Keon Coleman, the monster, the six foot four. Yeah, he's not the fastest guy in the world, but this dude reminds me so much of Drake London. The big contest catch ball ability. Um, he's got as sure of hands as you're going to find in this entire draft class. This dude does not drop the ball. Maybe not the biggest in separation, maybe not the biggest in, in in speed, but my goodness, you throw this man the ball, there's a good shot he's going to body out his coverage, come down with it, and has the consistent hands to when he's open, he's going to catch it. It feels like a very good value here. If I'm being honest, middle of the second round, which I'm seeing him drafted even, even later than this, I refuse to look past what is a superb talent in Keon Coleman because of a subpar 40 time. I think he plays much faster. 
um, in game. If you guys take a look at game speed versus 40 time, he looks way faster. He's explosive. Um, he's got short area quickness that's crazy. And again, he just brings kind of a similar Mike Williams element when it comes to we need that guy in a mismatch on the outside to get the ball. We need that guy in the red zone to get the ball. And Keon Coleman is as good as it's going to get for, you know, even in this very impressive draft class. There's a couple of guys that I like a lot. Jalen Polk in that instance. Xavier Leggett, who wasn't available in this instance. Um, but Keon Coleman, to me, is still a massive talent. And one that, for me, in the first time I've done mock drafts, kind of makes me want to go back to back at wide receiver because we got the explosive guy, Malik Neighbors, that's going to bring huge, huge plays in a certain role at wide receiver. And then Keon Coleman, who's also a big play guy, but does it in a different way. And you add that together, it gives Justin Herbert this awesome arsenal of weapons that is really impressive for any situation, which does help capitalize on Malik Neighbors' talent. You're going to see opportunities for Keon Coleman because of Malik Neighbors, and you're going to see opportunities for Malik Neighbors because of Keon Coleman. So you guys might roast me in the comments for this one, but I, it makes sense to me, and it's one where I think in terms of shopping or shocking uh, drafts, uh, mock drafts that I put out this year, it's one that I'm excited to share with you guys. All right? So the Chargers, they picked up an extra third-round pick as well as another wide receiver, and I think that wide receiver room is set and forget. You're ready to rock and roll at that point. What do the Chargers do in the third round now that they have two third-round picks? Let's go ahead and pick up that cornerback, Max Melton, cornerback out of Rutgers. This dude's awesome. We've talked about him before. He's kind of a, a versatile dude that can play on the outside and inside, has great coverage ability. Uh, maybe he does need a little bit of cleaning up here and there, but he has ball hawk ability. He has ability uh, uh, to stick to his man, mirror his dude. And I feel like this guy is going to return more value than where he's being drafted. does kind of reflect a pretty nice and deep cornerback position this year. Um, but one that I think the Chargers, yes, you're going to have to go corner at some point. And if they boldly go wide receiver back to back, I think Max Melton or a, a really nice corner at some point is going to be a, a pretty much a necessity at this point. But the Chargers in this mock draft did return some nice value with another third round pick in which they're going to select via the Cleveland's 85 pick, Blake Fisher, uh, offensive lineman at a Notre Dame. This is your right tackle of the future, okay? And I think there's a shot that he could make it to the Chargers in round four, but I do believe that he is very much so worth a late to middle third round pick. Uh, just because of what I think he's projected to be in the future. This is a starting right tackle, maybe even right now. But the perfect situation for Blake Fisher is going to a team that doesn't need you to step into that role right away. Let's go ahead and grow into it. As this new system and this new offense grows, so will Blake Fisher as the successor to Trey Pipkins at some point, maybe even as soon as next season. He could even win the starting job throughout the course of this year, but until then, serves as a very valuable backup and a future piece of this offense that really fits what Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman are trying to build. This is your power guy on the outside, the dude that's going to create space for your running back, has great ability to protect your quarterback uh, as well. So Blake Fisher, an awesome option here in the third round with the second selection for the Chargers. Now we got a couple more picks to go through here as the Chargers do also have two selections in the next round. Let's move into the fourth where the Chargers are going to select at pick 105, Ray Davis, running back out of Kentucky. This guy shocked the crap out of me. I'm not going to lie. I've looked at him here and there, decided to take some time for him last week, really kind of break down what he is as a player, and he's going to be awesome in the second level, specifically when you're talking about meshing with a team like the Los Angeles Chargers who have an idea of what they want to be on the ground. We've got Gus Edwards in there as kind of your bell cow, right? The dude that's going to go in there and churn out the tough yards, be the big physical back that this team wants to build an identity around. Behind him, you're going to have to have some versatility. You're going to have to have different flavor, a different you know, change of pace kind of guy. And Ray Davis just screams value in the fourth round. Crazy shifty, hugely impressive as a receiver, I might add. This man is crazy as a receiving back, which, let's be honest, Gus Edwards, maybe not the biggest weapon in that in those situations. Ray Davis certainly would bring that juice to the table. He honestly kind of all around feels like an awesome running back, maybe outside of the big speed. He's shifty, great vision, maybe uh, needs a little bit of work as a blocker, but my goodness, watch this guy go in terms of receiving and see him and what his ability can do in terms of complementing the Chargers' number one back in Gus Edwards. Love this dude. Fourth round pick, great value. I think Chargers fans would be very happy with this one. 
with our second fourth round pick at pick 110. I got the Chargers going with another cornerback. I think, again, if there's a couple positions you want to double dip at, I think corner is going to be one of them. And this time, instead of taking the inside outside guy, um, where I think Max uh, Melton would be a very good slot corner, let's take a guy who's got a little bit of upside on the outside. Um, this dude, Chris Abrams Drain, could be that dude. Um, he's a great athlete. He's got the makings of a pretty solid cornerback two in the future, maybe cornerback three, but he's got some awesome ball hawking upside. I think this dude could be a very nice weapon on the defense if brought up correctly by Jesse Minter, which again, has a pretty good shot of happening. So Chris Abrams, Dre, not bad option here in the fourth round and one that I think returns a lot of value. Finally, to wrap up draft C, I got the Chargers selecting Makai Wingo, defensive lineman at LSU. Uh, the Chargers need to go D-line at some point. Um, I think in this particular mock draft, I would view him maybe taking a guy a little later, certainly a center a little bit later. There's still some, a couple of guys I like there in terms of, you know, uh, trench uh, drafting. But in this case, I like Makai Wingo here at this position at 140. Uh, the dude kind of feels like a nice, versatile piece, a guy that you can move around in the defensive line uh, because he is fast. He is quick. He's going to be that guy that you want to get after the quarterback with. But he's also a pretty solid run defender as well. So in terms of you know, again, we're trying to return value here. I think Makai Wingo is going to be an awesome dude that you can develop, but also brings in some rotational value this season. Whereas, you know, Puna Ford may be a little bit older. Some of these other guys, you know, maybe not as well-rounded uh, as they are recent draft picks of the Chargers. I think Wingo would provide some nice, you know, uh, talent and, and change of pace there with his versatility. Uh, would be something that I think Jesse Minter has a lot of fun with. So you guys in the comment section below, let me know what your favorite draft was. We're going to go through all of these one more time. Uh, so you guys can tell me what some of your favorite selections were and maybe either rank them in a way that would excite you or give me your favorite one altogether. So I'm actually going to go ahead and reset all of these guys here really quick. And we're going to go ahead and uh, recap exactly what happened in these mock drafts. Okay. Cause this was a pretty crazy episode. So mock draft a, this one started with the awesome slide of Marvin Harrison Jr. We then traded down in the second round and selected Zach Frazier, center out of West Virginia, followed by Kyrie Jackson in the third round, cornerback out of Oregon. Uh, pick 105 would go Jerry and Jones, slot cornerback with nice man upside. Uh, the trade compensation via Chicago is going to bring us back Leonard uh, Taylor, the third defensive lineman. We got Will Shipley coming in via Houston's pick, the uh, versatile uh, running back, wrapped up by Ben Sinnott, the guy, the jack of all trades at tight end. In draft B, we started with the trade here. This is going to return us the Vikings selections at 111 and 123. We're going to pick up Brock Bowers at an awesome value. Nate Wiggins at an awesome value. We're going to go ahead and trade up back into the first round in this mock draft to take Lad McConkey. I gotta be honest, guys, this might be actually my favorite mock draft of this episode. We're also gonna get Chris Jenkins, Cedric Van Pran, Taj Washington. Uh, and that's from another mock draft there. Taj Washington round out draft B. That is a fan friggin' tastic value, if you ask me. One that reflects some awesome new weapons for Justin Herbert and ushers in the new Georgia Bulldogs offense for the Bolts. Finally, in draft C, started off with Malik Neighbors, pick number one or draft number one. We tried it down with the Cleveland Browns, selected Keon Coleman in a shocking back-to-back -back wide receiver selection, then went and grabbed Max Melton at cornerback, Blake Fisher at tackle, Ray Davis at running back, Chris Abrams Drain at cornerback, and finally Makai Wingo at defensive line. So you guys in the comment section, let me know what your favorite is. It's kind of crazy to think because I would say nine out of 10 times, whatever mock draft that we get, Marvin Harrison Jr., tends to be my favorite one and it still could kind of be for me in this one but i'll be honest with you guys man i like draft b <laughs> that return is quite insane i honestly like it just it feels like you're getting all your weapons you're 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 committing to the new offense you're committing to the new style and defense you're getting a lot of value along the way that's probably going to be my favorite for this one. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been The Director. If you liked what you saw here, hit us up with a like and sub. We're so close to 50,000 subs, I can almost taste it. Would love to see that happen before the draft, even if we can make that happen. Guys, thank you again so much for joining me. We'll catch you next time. As always, bolt up and stay frosty. Eh, that return, man. Joe Ortiz might be cooking something up.